Aggressive firefighter. I, uh, I love the term aggressive firefighter. That's why I have a website of it. Aggressive is uh, making an all-out effort to win or succeed. A firefighter, us, is a person who combats destructive fires. So it makes perfect sense that an aggressive firefighter is a person who makes an all-out effort to successfully combat destructive fires. That's a pretty good definition of what I want to be in the fire service. There's been a lot of things that I've wanted to be in the fire service and want to be the best at, but I really love the fact that I look at myself as an aggressive firefighter. I also look at myself that every day I'm the worst person that wear my, wears my turnouts, and I'm the best person that wears my turnouts. I really do make the choice when I come to work. I think it's funny sometimes is that when you use the term aggressive firefighter, when I use the term aggressive firefighter, they always, they, you know, them, they always have to add some sort of adjective, some sort of corrective action to the word aggressive. They say, oh, but we want our firefighters to be smart firefighters. But, but we want them to be uh, intelligent firefighters. But, but we want them to be safe firefighters. I think it's absolutely bizarre that they have a problem with the word aggressive, yet fighter is in our name. If I pay $100 for a UFC uh, a bout, do I want to have, you know, Johnny, the safety mangler, fighting Jenny, the intelligent ball crusher? No. I am paying my 100 bucks for the UFC match. I want somebody to aggressively pursue, make an all-out effort. If I'm paying for the UFC battle, I want an all-out effort to succeed. What are we supposed to be successful at? We're supposed to be successful at combating destructive fires. Unrestrained fire is what we are to combat. Failure to do so means that we are absolutely not meeting the standard of what we are called to do. I believe this is one of my favorite videos. It's going to work. Crazy. Eh. Crazy people don't last at anything. Crazy people are a flash in the pan. I played the game 28 years. You know, three broken necks, one Goran, one broken leg. It wasn't too bad. My name's Rob Smets and I'm a five-time world champion bullfighter. My job was when the cowboy hit the ground to make sure that I provided myself as a better target for the bull than the cowboy. Hang on, Robert. All there. Whenever I fought bulls, I always planned for the worst, hoped for the best, and with a little luck, we end up somewhere in the middle. Robert Smets, you're still my hero. The job is a lot like being chosen as the guys that get to guard the president. The best bull riders in the world vote on the guys whom they want there to protect them. So it's a badge of honor to get chosen for that job. No, 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 not again. Stay up, Rob Smith, Smith, you got him. up and over the top. That's why they call him Cowboy Lifesaver. You've got to be a guy that's maybe got more heart than good sense sometimes. You be willing to put it out there for, for somebody else. Whip, and then whip. I know that the animal has the ability to take me out. My sport, like any other sport, has a basic set of fundamentals. If you do the fundamentals right, you're going to win more than you lose. But no matter how fundamentally sound you are, sooner or later you get knocked on your ass. Ouch, ouch. He's trying to hang it right And then you him. find out how much heart God gave you and how much you want to play the game. He'll get up. You can't kill that Oregonian. That kid is tough. A lot of people say, oh, you're a rodeo clown. Well, no, I'm not a rodeo clown. I don't tell jokes. I, you know, I don't worry about being funny. I'm a bodyguard. If somebody's going to get hit, it should be me. There's nothing worse on a night than when you have a bull rider get hit. Uh-oh, he's out. He's out. If they're going to carry somebody out, I'd just as soon it be me if it's on my watch. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I just see it in the vision. So the... Uh, if it's, if it's on your watch, are you willing to be the one that's carried out because you gave an all-out effort to successfully combat unrestrained fire, to go and occupy spaces that we can occupy that no one else can, to give that person the last, best chance 
at life? Or are you going to make the call from the yard that, that those people are dead and only by a cell phone call from inside the house do you get, you realize that there's somebody alive in there? Aggressive firefighters do not hold back. Aggressive firefighters pursue with deliberate passion the ability to come to work every day and give an all-out effort. So the choice is truly yours. Are you a firefighter or are you a fire clown? Is your job at work to tell jokes? I have to tell you, I've gotten in more trouble by being a firefighter than I ever have by being the recliner clown. I don't know if your department is the same, but if I were to sit in my recliner and do absolutely nothing all day long, nobody would be upset about it. But if I go out and train Hurt, uh, somebody gets hurt while we're doing training or we pursue something aggressively and somebody sprains, sprains an ankle or we break a piece of equipment, things are frowned upon. It's not as bad as it was, but it's still, I hear it over and over again. Are we giving an all-out effort to be the best that we can be? And I say that the choice is yours. Of all the talks that we've had today, man, it was just so diverse. It is amazing when you open up a box and say, you know what, there's no barriers, there's no agenda, Come and give us your best. And people did come and gave their, their best. And we had an incredible outpouring. But I would like to say that in aggressive firefighting, it can be handled if we just look at the five fundamentals. As Rob Smith said, most, most great things come down to the basic fundamentals and doing the fundamentals absolutely correctly. So what we do is we put water on the fire. It's amazing, but we have... YouTube documentation that, <laughs> that we fail as a fire service community to do this very thing, to put water on a fire. And in, in my community, we have a problem doing this. We take tools and we use them. You have to know how to use the tools and you have to know how to take them. Also, in, uh, in my, from my own eyes and on YouTube, people show up to do work without tools. If I'm a framer, I bring a framing hammer. If I'm a firefighter, I bring tools of a firefighter. Things that uh, an aggressive firefighter does the unglamorous work. They chase out kinks. They uh, move hose. They do writ, not by just being out, an outstanding writ, outstanding in the yard, not doing anything. They're in there doing something. Aggressive firefighters have the passion to pursue an all-out effort. And when they do that, they start off by operating from the combat position. We talked a lot about physical fitness. We talked a lot about mental fitness. We talked a lot about uh, various aspects of getting in there and doing the job. Operate from the combat position. I'm going to make a, 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 a statement. You know, if Shobo is wanting me to give up ice cream for 10 shifts, I'm going to encourage everybody, do this. When you get to work, check your SCBA all the way very first thing. And when that bell rings to say that your SCBA is charged because you're checking it, have that be the ring of the bell where you're jumping into the ring ready to fight. Have that switch something in your mind that it's your go to, uh, to work time. And the last thing is, is finish the task. I think it was funny somebody else mentioned that and that we should finish the task. Put water on the fire. Uh, Andy Frederick says, if you put, put the fire out right in the first place, you won't have to jump out the window. I think that's funny. I teach jumping out windows. <laughs> and so I mean, I'm probably pretty, con pretty concerned because sometimes I eat too much ice cream. I'm a little bloated. I don't get into the fire enough. And I have to jump out the window. Putting water on the fire, we have, it's a basic situation. We have the target and we have the solution. The fire engine is created for the purpose of putting water on the fire. The hoses are pre-connected. The lines are there. The water is in the tank. We get there quickly. It works effectively. We have great training, and yet we still fell, fail to do the very thing that we need to do, which is to put water on the fire. <laughs> okay, guys, right there, where's that fire? I'd like for you to put water on it. <laughs> Consistently until there's no more fire. And we want to take a similar approach right here. We want to put water on the fire until there's no more fire.
So the problem is not interior versus exterior. I hear so much uh, uh, debate over where we apply the water from. But if you look at the challenges that we have in the fire service, it's not where the water is coming from. It's the fact that any water is put on the fire at all. What are we doing? We sharpen our tools and then our tools sharpen us. That's my, my wife actually uh, came up with that. She was talking about uh, second graders, <laughs> but I said, I'm gonna use that. We take a tool and use it. I love working uh, with the cousins, uh, the, the brothers, and um, because they use tools so well because they've seen it over and over and over again. And I cherish that. I stand back sometimes, I get in there sometimes, and it's just a, a great opportunity. I never go away not learning something. Take a tool and use it. I take, uh, I take a New York hook, that's, that's my go-to tool. My, uh, the, I always tell the firefighter, bring the irons, I'll bring the New York, we'll get those three tools uh, up to the fire and we can actually do work. Those are the three tools. If you're not master at those tools, stop buying other freaky tools, master those. Master those and stop buying the next greatest thing. It's like, oh, why do you have to use a rabbit jam tool? Because you don't know how to use irons. Come on, get in there. Do the unglamorous work. My work, is a, my work is a game, a very serious game. I have fun at work, I have too much fun at work. Too much fun. And because it is a great thing. When I was listening to Shobo's brothers cheer him and asking for the replay, how awesome would it be to get up in that ladder, do your VES, get a baby grab out of a, out of a crib, come down the ladder, and the, the thing that you, I would have to hold back on is not spiking the baby doing a, chair, doing a, a, a victory dance. Don't spike the baby. But, and then you could just replay it. Would it be awesome if our brothers were like, whoa, did you see that? That's what we want in this area. Not, if somebody mentioned stop, you know, stop slamming people on, um, on the Facebook and on the YouTube videos and all that. And I say, yeah, we should. You know what, we should look at those things and see what they're doing right. Yes, we all make mistakes. We were, I, was on a, I was doing outstanding writ in the driveway and I thought this house was going to the ground. So I told my buddy, I told the crew, I said, hey, let's go stand on the Charlie side. They say, why? I said, see all those cell phone cameras? They're gonna wonder why the three knuckleheads are standing in the driveway when the house burns down to the ground. Do the unglamorous work. When you're doing assigned writ, all out writ, aggressive writ. Okay, that's what we want. Okay, do the unglamorous work, move hose, be the backup team, chase kinks, save your own, writ. Uh, check, train, and restore. Check your gear, train with your gear, restore your gear, get it moving. Operate from the combat position. The important thing in life is not victory, but combat. The task of firefighting is a, dan is, is a dangerous, physically demanding, skill-based activity that requires education, training, and physical fitness. It should not be a aha moment when you come to work. I am not the most physical fit guy on my crew. We have some monsters on my crew. One of them is gonna be serving drinks up uh, upstairs and they just can work me to the ground. But I, you know what? I tell them, I, tell them, I said, you, you may be strong, but I got a whole lot of grit and a whole bunch of never quit. And so I will get you. Finish the task. We must, finish, we, uh, we must own the finish line. Know what the finish is before we start. Um, how do you finish? Success seems to be connected with action. Duh. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. First step toward failure is trying. I jokingly say that, but one of the biggest problems that we have in the, in the new generation of people is that they have learned to avoid failing, you just don't try. But also, if you go into a situation and say, I'm going to try to enter that space and save that victim, I'm gonna to try to put that fire out, you are destined to some level of failure. We don't try, we do. You go in and you do work. Prepare for the sprint and the marathon. We do have to sprint and we do have to run a marathon. Sometimes you have to give all out effort over a long period of time and sometimes you have to do it just for a sprint. You have to train for both. Have grit and a big old pile of never quit. 
You know, as older as we get, uh, there's a great TED talk about the most successful people are the ones that have the grit. They aren't the smartest, I'm not the smartest. They're not the strongest, I'm not the strongest. They're not the bravest. But they just have this unique ability to have grit and they don't quit. I heard a story from uh, uh, the brothers in Portland about how they were rescuing a, a woman out of a hoarder house. And the thing that got me about the story, it ultimately resulted in failure. She lost her life. She, they didn't save a life. But to hear the story was all grit and a whole bunch of never quit. Thank you so much for coming to Fire Talk Portland. I am so excited about what's gonna happen in the future. I can only imagine that as great as it was, it is gonna be so much better. Uh, I hope uh, next year it's gonna be the weekend before Thanksgiving uh, so we can align it with the Randy Carpenter uh, anniversary of his, uh, of his death. And um, it's gonna be there, uh, it's gonna be just a key, uh, keystone event for them. Like I said, I, I'm deeply humbled. N even though I'm up here uh, rambling on throughout the day, none of this was me. Everybody here, all the presenters, everybody and uh, the vendors, they all did it. I basically just stood out of the way and let it happen. I thank you so much for coming, remember, we are people that give all out efforts to successfully combat unrestrained, destructive fire. All of the lessons that you learn, never give up. Thank you.